Hello, it's Regina. Welcome back to my haunted library. Hope you're doing well. Whoa, Lily says hello. Sometimes I really think this little dog is possessed. <coughs> I've been playing with my Ouija board and my planchette, I think it's called, and I keep coming up with Captain Howdy, and I don't understand why. No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is my Ouija board, and I, the reason I'm bringing Captain Howdy up is because I'm doing a little, I don't know, review discussion of The Exorcist, the book, and a little bit about the movie, too. The paperback version of this book uh, had the same font and the scary face of this um, kind of girl in, out of focus, but it was more like purple. That used to be under my parents' bed along with the other forbidden books like, um, I don't know, Fear of Flying by Erica Jong and The Other Side of Midnight by Sidney Sheldon, I think that was his name, and uh, Sybil. Sybil was one of my favorites. So uh, yeah, I got my hands on those books and I read them and loved them. And I hadn't read The Exorcist. I, I've read it as an adult, but I, it's been a few years, so I really enjoyed reading this book and um, how I got to this book is that in a book that I wrote, I just did a, my third uh, book in a series for Wattpad, I dealt with exorcism. So I went back and looked at some of this, uh, some scenes from the movie and uh, read this book because it really is a great source. William Peter Blatty did extensive research into the subject before he wrote this book or, and during his whole creative process. There is an excellent uh, video I found on YouTube, which I'll link below, that gets into him. I think he's dead now, but when he was, you know, in recent years, going back to this little bungalow in California where he wrote The Exorcist, um, staying up day and night. He was ex um, separated from his wife, who was married a lot of times. He was really kind of an interesting guy. I like this uh, cover photo on the back. He's got a, a kind of a cool 70s mustache going. He seemed like a very intelligent, intense, very creative person. His background is interesting. He, he did uh, study with the Jesuit schools and he went to Georgetown University and, and uh, learned to write there and he did so much research on this book and it really shows. This is not uh, just a horror book. I mean it might not even be classified as horror really because he wasn't like a horror genre writer. And uh, I remember when the movie came out and of course it made a huge splash. I don't think I saw it when it when it first came out. I was too little, but I did go to see it at some point in the movie theater. I don't remember exactly when, but then since then I've seen it many, many times and have studied it. And um, I just did a, a recent blog about the opening uh, Northern Iraq sequence, which I think is one of the strongest part of the whole film. And for me, it always, like the scariest part. Uh, the whole thing with the head turning around and I really don't like the, the uh, director's cut with the spider walk. I think there was a reason why that was cut and it sh should not be in there because it just, to me, it, it's laughable. But um, yeah, so I was uh, kind of on, a, on an exorcist kick. I've been reading Anne Rice, uh, inter uh, not interview with a vampire. I was, I was reading Anne Rice's uh, Witching Hour, which I'll get back to. And then I got kind of sidetracked with Book Tubathon and, and then I picked up The Exorcist and spent a couple days reading it. And it's just such a good book. And when uh, I listened to that um, interview or, and watched the interview on YouTube about uh, William Peter Blatty's process, how he would work all day long and all night, isolated in this cabin for almost a year working on this book, it really shows. And it was um, quite inspiring for me as a writer to devote that much energy into a project when you really got something good. And it's funny because as he was talking about it, he was just like, oh, I was chain smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee, which of course is not that healthy, but I noticed when I'm reading the book, all the characters like chain smoke cigarettes and drink a lot of coffee. So I guess that was on his mind. But what makes this book so great is not just the, uh, the thrills and chills, but the actual depth of characters. He writes from different points of view. You have Chris McNeil, the actress, who 
he, I remember uh, reading something where he based it on Shirley MacLaine, and uh, you can really tell it's based on Shirley MacLaine when you read the book. And then even in the movie, Ellen Burstyn kind of has a little Shirley MacLaine hairdo. But um, I'm just, want, I'm curious, maybe Shirley MacLaine was offered the role. I'm not sure. I have to look into that. But Ellen Burstyn is great. She's always on that edge of hysteria in her voice. And uh, I just, I love the way she plays it up. Uh, Burke Dennings, I forget the name of that actor, he's wonderful in that role. The entire cast is incredible, really true to the book. And um, I had no idea that when I saw early how young Max von Sydow, I hope I'm saying his name correctly, um, the Swedish actor, that he was really not that old when he did that. But he has the, the gravitas and the, the depth to, to make that character really believable. And even though he only appears at the, in the first scene and then towards the end, the exorcism itself doesn't really take up that much of either the book or the movie. It, it's like a, a roller coaster ride at the end, but because there's that section in the beginning, his character has this kind of weight. If you haven't read the book, I highly recommend it. Yes, it's uh, some very disturbing scenes in it, just like the movie, very graphic, which when I think about when I was probably like, uh, 12 years old when I was reading this. And I remember when I was a kid, my mom through the book, and we were Catholic, very devout Catholics, and my mother would be like, don't you mess around with those Ouija boards. She had obviously read the book. And don't mess around with the Ouija board. Demons, especially young, I guess he, she was trying to say girls at puberty, uh, the demons are attracted to them. So naturally, I got myself <laughs> a Ouija board. Now this I bought in an antique sale. Held on to it all these years. And um, I haven't, I think maybe it's my mother's warning. I've never really gotten too much into the Ouija board. I'm actually a little scared of it. It does, um, I've, I've played around with it before and it does, it's sort of like an automatic writing, kind of like the surrealist automatic writing. Um, you kind of get pulled into a little bit of a trance when you're doing it. And uh, yeah, so I, I, but I always kind of stop before I go too far because I, maybe I'm, I am afraid Captain Howdy is going to show up. That's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library, and I'll see you soon. Bye.